All right, guys, I put these on here because they look kind of similar. Actually, they look pretty darn similar. But I'm, as I'm walking around here and you guys work, you're catching on to the difference. And what is it? Say it. You can, like, I don't know how to say it, but you can, like, uh, square it and you can't square that one. Yeah, okay. So it's, you're right. And? This one, bases can be made the same, that one not, right? This one, less work. This one, a fair bit more work. So this is what Antonio said. We can write this as 6 squared and 6 cubed. And then power to a power means multiply. So 6 to the 4x and 6 to the 3x minus 3. Once bases are exactly the same, set the exponents equal. So 4x equals 3x minus 3, and then x equals negative 3. So that one can be done without a calculator and without too much work if you can see that the bases can be made the same. Do you have to do it this way? You could do it the way that we're about to do that one as well. It's just more work, but you could. Uh, so this one, bases are obviously not going to be made the same, not 7 and 4. And so we've done like log of both sides or natural log, either one. And then why did we, why do we want to do log of both sides? What good does that do? What good does it do? Because it doesn't cancel, like log of 7 does not cancel 7 to the power and log of 4, same thing. Good. It allows us to bring the exponents out of the exponent, the variables out of the exponent, and make it usable. So that we can start solving. Now remember log of 7 is and log of 4, those are both just numbers. So functionally, those could just be like 2 and 3 or something, right? It's just a number. Which means our next step should be to distribute. Okay? Before I do that, actually, some, some students want to um, like divide the log of 7 off and then maybe divide by x minus 1. So you could imagine this log and log. Is that going to help? I don't want to write everything in there, but it, it isn't. Now, this, if you have a calculator and turn this just into a number, you know, log of 4 divided by log of 7, just some decimal, then yes, that would be helpful. It, it would be kind of ugly and messy, though. So go ahead and distribute instead. Put your x out front, that way it doesn't look like it's log of 4x or log of 7x, so put the x out front. Okay, next step is to get the x logs together. And it doesn't matter which side you get it on, but I would probably recommend getting rid of this negative one. So now we're getting our x logs together. and then. We haven't, I don't think we've done one, maybe we have, but we need to get the other ones together as well. So in our notes it says, have the other stuff on the other side. Essentially that's what it says. How do we write these sums? Like those and that one are gone. How do we write these two sums now? Can I write 2x log? Is that okay? 2x, add the x, can I say log of 11? No? And then how about over here, can I say log of 11? Can we add before we do higher order functions? Okay, so we're just going to write log of 7 plus log of 4, so just keep it written out. Same on that side. So close. We want to get x to 1x, like down to just one of them, not in several spots. So how do we do that? 
X is in two places. I want it in one. How do we do that? Uh, no, we can't do that. Kind of. What do we call it when I do this? It is a form of dividing. Yeah, GCF, good. So GCF the X out front. And what do you notice about the leftovers here and here? They're the same. I mean, they're not written in the same order, but they're, they are the same. <coughs> so how are we going to get X by itself? Yeah, just divide this big old thing off. Of both. If this was minus, would it be the same? Would, if this, if these both had minus, would they be the same? No, only because there's a plus sign there. And we end up with one. Do we need, oh, never mind, we're not there yet. How'd that go? Give me a thumb. That's mostly in the middle. What do you think? Like, where's the... What makes it go top to middle? The one on the right? Okay. There's a lot going on in that problem. How did the homework go? Any of those you'd like to do? Did you hear it? Twenty-eight. Okay, go ahead and ask about this. On the on the bottom one like this, what would you divide? Yeah. Does it matter which way you divide it? Because you put plus or. It doesn't matter because this is plus. Okay. If it happened to be a different problem and this was minus, these would not be the same, and that would really matter. But in this case, it's okay to write it just like that. It's okay. So if it was minus, do we just put it on top of it? Yeah, so she's asking if, let's say these were both subtraction. You can't just cancel them to 1, because they are not the same if these were both subtraction. So you would just carefully put that in your calculator. And it is, like, there's a lot of parentheses, so you do have to be kind of careful. Good. You guys did a good job asking these questions. Think questions like that. Uh, well, why couldn't you just leave that as your answer on the non-calculator part? Oh, okay. As long as you think that's okay. Well, yeah. Uh, which, so, you said 28? Okay. Dale. Good old Dale. Anybody know a Dale? I know a Dale. Yeah. So he's going to invest a thousand bucks and he wants to get 2500 in 10 years. So maybe he goes shopping around for a good rate. It says what annual rate compounded continuously. That's a key word. Remember on your quiz, quite a few people missed reading that. So they wrote the wrong formula. So read carefully, and uh, it says, so before he reaches his goal, we're trying to find the rate, okay? So we know that we have to use the continuous compounding equation, P, that is not it, P e to the RT, what is A? What is A? It's his goal. That's how much he wants to have. P is how much he started with. E, of course, is just E. We don't know R. And then he wants this money back in 10 years. So T is 10. So we're basically using our new solving skills to solve one of the problems we had before that we would have had to graph. Like we, before, you'd either have to guess a rate or graph it to solve for a rate, which is both of those are a pain. So let's solve this now that we can do it algebraically. What's first? Yeah. 
Things are scaring me. Yeah, we gotta get the log or the exponent, either one, in this case an exponent by itself. Are you good if I write this as 10R? Good. Now we need to get that R out of the exponent. How? Yes, natural log both sides. Why natural log and not log? It's E. Could we do log? Yeah, we could, but then we'd have to bring the 10R out front and divide, but you could. So remember, these cancel, and we have just 10R. Okay, now what? Okay, and we're trying to find a rate, so what should our final answer be in? What kind of, what kind of format? I just love talking to myself. You do too, Yar? No. 9.2%. That help. Any others? You look like you have one. Five, twenty-five. All right, directions here. Find all solutions round to the nearest ten thousand. Okay. Well, our goal is to get this x out of the exponent, so what's the first step? Add 12. Add 12. What is going on here? How do we get rid of the half so we can get x down out of the exponent? Okay, I heard this. That is a half. Does it help us to do that? No, because this is 9. If this was 8, it would help. Or 16 or 4 or something. But in this case, we can't get the same base between the 1 half and the 9. So how do we undo 1 half to the x? Sure. We could log both sides. Okay, so we get log of 9 and x log of 1 half. So pull that, that allows us to pull that x out front and then just divide by log of half. Now, oh, let me finish this one to give you a number, but then I have a question for you. Are you guys being careful with your parentheses when you do these? Because they, as you know, they all always, the logs always put one up here. So negative 3.2. But at this step, could we have done something else? So let's say you're on your calculator section of your test. Do you have another option at that point? Yes, the Could you explain it from the bottom form the exponential? That's what I did. Okay. I just calculate. This is the exponential form. That's what I did. Solve the exponential form. How? I did. I just took like one half. I 
If I if this was an in context problem that I asked you to solve for money or population, thinking back to that, did we always write log out front? Okay, so what else could you do? You have your favorite little tool called the graphing calculator. It's your favorite, isn't it? Wow, you guys are kind of dead fish today. How about this? Log base a half of a nine. Doesn't that cancel that? Log one of one log base one half of nine. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. But then you have to have this key, this math button and scroll forever and ever. Log base. Log base point five of nine. And you get the same thing. So which method do you want to use on your test? Just curious, raise your hand if you're going to use this method. All right, how about this method? Raise your hand. All right, we're about half and half. Okay. Any others on the homework that you'd like to do? Any others? Any others? Okay, let's check the other answers at least. So, number 17. Should have got 0. 0.6833. Number 18, negative 1.5 and 3. Number 19, negative 0. 0.4286. Number 21 is 5. 22 is 1.44. 23. 4.5, I'm just going to cut the decimals short so we can save some time. 23 is 4.5, 24, negative 0.56, 25, negative 3.17, 26, 4.06, 27 is 7, and then 28 we did. Any questions on any of this? All right. Go ahead and grab your notes. We have to talk about the last chunk of stuff. Asking me this now. <laughs> I just want to know. Or they just let him know. It's because, you remember that day they sat there and like 15 or 20 minutes trying to figure out my middle name? <laughs> so now that's what she's been calling me. Why do you know his He told us. Only because you wanted to know. Or guest or something, I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway. Guys, last thing we have to solve is how to solve log equations. And like this is, you're going to consider this a fairly easy start. And then we'll get into some more busy ones. But the good thing about this is we will, have, we will write notes for one process that you'll apply slightly differently in each problem. But like our exponential notes, we had three different methods, right? Three different processes to solve that. So this will be less in the overall um, note section. Now, right now, if you look at this one, how would you get x and on each side, how would you get x out of a natural log? Because I feel like you probably already have an idea how to do these kinds. Before you say, raise your hand if you have an idea of what you would do to get those x's out 
out of the natural law. Okay? You guys agree that if I do e to the natural log, those cancel, and we're just left with what's left? Okay. All right, so with that said, huh? We will have to, yeah. Go ahead and write this one down, please, as an example. And we've already mentioned the big idea, but there's more to it. I don't have a lot of things. There's more to it. So we are going to undo, like, first thing I want you to note, there's one log on each side. If we happen to have, like, another natural log over here, we would want to combine them. I'll show you an example of that after this one. Okay, so then our next job is to undo the log. Come on, board. How? Well, we just said that we're going to e to the power of, and that undoes those natural logs. Okay. Notice this time we're left with a quadratic equation. How do we undo a quadratic? How do we solve it? Maybe I should say it that way. Good. So, so set it equal to zero. If it has the x term, set it equal to zero. Okay. Then we look to see if we can factor. I am going to tell you that you can't always factor. What do you do in that case? The quadratic formula. How many of you have it memorized? One, two, three, four. Okay. The rest of you would probably be wise to put it on your note card. If, in case you need it. Anyway, let's star this. Remember we have A times C on top, B on the bottom, and then A on the sides. Do we have factors of negative 16 that add up to negative 6? What are they? 8 minus 2. Good. Okay. How do we solve from there? Find the zeros, right? Yeah, good. What are our two zeros? Eight and negative two. They're eight and two. Eight and negative two. Are we done? You would like to be, but you're not. Okay? And here's why. Do you remember back when we were solving these kind of equations? Right, we had stuff in here. What did we have to do at the end of those? We had to check for extraneous solutions, remember? Make sure they work. Well, same thing here. Here's why. If I go plug this negative 2 back in this original, like here, for example, then this is trying to natural log a negative 12. Does that work? Why not? I don't know. So we're going to do a check now. And if I plug negative 2 in on just, just the right side, it's wanting us to do natural log of negative 12. If we plug it in on the other side, it will also say natural log of negative 12. 
So we're not checking for equality. We're checking if that's okay to do. Tell me what the graph of the natural log function looks like. And if you don't know, you better learn it soon because it is on there, on your test. What does the graph of natural log look like? It's just parent graph natural log. Correct? It does this. And it crosses here at 1. And that's, that's all. So basically what this is asking us to do is find a number. When I plug in negative 12, find a number on the graph. So tell me if I'm out here looking at x equals negative 12, what's going to happen? Can you wake him up so you can pay attention? Thanks. What's going to happen over here? If I ask for natural log of this negative 12, when my whole graph is over on the right side of the, of the y-axis. What's natural log of negative 12? Oh my gosh, don't even grab your calculator. Look at my picture. Is there one? Negative 12 is here. If I go plug in x equals negative 12, am I ever going to hit that thing? So what is natural log of negative 12? It's extraneous, right? It's undefined. It doesn't, it doesn't exist on our function. Yeah, if you plug it in your calculator, now that you know that, it should say error. But you shouldn't need the calculator to tell you that. Okay? Guys, if you're struggling with this, there are four plus points on your test on this stuff. So don't let that go. Go study it. Does negative 8 work, or does it create an issue as well? Is, is there such a thing as natural log of 48? Is there such a thing as natural log of 48 on this side? Yes? So 8 is fine. Negative is not. Negative 2. Um, what other number will not work? What other number will you have to say is extraneous if it creates an argument that is this number? What else is not okay? We just saw that a negative won't work. What else? Zero. Yeah, why is it 0? Because it never touches... Yeah, like I was super careful to never touch that y-axis because the y-axis is the what? Asymptote. Know that word, definitely. And that means it never touches zero. So if you, if this check becomes natural log of zero, it, your calculator and you should be able to say, nope, that doesn't work. It never touches zero. So it's extraneous. Good? No, uh, those are fine. Okay, I don't have any on here, so let's do... On, I'm going to pick one off your sheet. Or you can just write this one down. So log base 6, x squared minus 2x. sure when you write this down that you double check. So it's, she's asking log versus natural log versus log base 2, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Do the graphs have similar key features? So really the only difference, they all have an asymptote of the y-axis, the parent, natural log, parent, log, parent, log base, whatever. They all have an asymptote of the y-axis. They all cross at 1. It's just the it, what matters is kind of their shape after that. So let's say that's the natural log, and then log base 10 would be flatter. It should still cross through, but it's hard to do that. There it goes. Okay, log base 2, or log base, I don't know, 1 half or whatever. 
would come up higher. So, but, but they all have those same kind of key features. Yeah. Let me ask you, why would she be asking that? Why would she ask that? Didn't we just talk about extraneous solutions? What if your log is log base 6? You need to know where that has extraneous solutions, right? Like, is it all negatives, or is it only some negatives? Well, turns out it's the same as natural log. All right, work with me here. Our first step is to get a single log. Like, condense to get a single log. Well, the left side is already condensed. The right side needs to be condensed. And this is partially why we learned how to do that. So how can we condense this side so that it's one log? Well, we'll distribute after we do this. What does this plus tell us to do? Are we wrong? No, you're not. She said it tells us to add. <laughs> you're right. How do we condense, though? It becomes log base 6 of what? A product. Remember the product property? So multiply them back together, go backwards. Okay, now we have a single log. The other side, like I said, was fine. So leave it alone. But that sure would be better if it was cleaned up. So clean up inside if possible. So now we distribute, like you said a second ago. 2x times x is 2x squared, and then we get 2x minus 3x. So minus x and then minus 3. Everybody good with that step? This left side just tags along for now. You could have a problem with more than one log on both sides. And then you'd have to clean up both sides, right? You'd have to condense both sides back to one log. All right. Next step is to get rid of the log. How? Get rid, I guess I could say, of the log. How do we do that in this case? You want to hear? It's 6 to the power, right? That's the inverse of log base 6. So 6 to the log base 6, that cancels those. And we're back to having a quadratic. How do we solve from there? How do we solve from there? Plus two. Set it equal to zero. So solve for x. Guys, at this point in Algebra 2 course, I don't need to explain that step. It's just, if it's quadratic, you know what to do. Linear, you know what to do, etc. Right? So we want to get this set equal to zero. And I'm... I'm going to write it this way, but then reverse the order because I like my stuff on the, like, all my workings on the left side. So 2x squared minus x squared, negative x plus 2x, and negative 3. Everybody good on that step? Does it factor? Does that mean we can't solve it? What is the quadratic formula?
Yeah. Good job. Again, if you don't have that on your note card, you might want to put it on there. Okay. Let's plug in everything. So we have negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 all over 2 times 1. Okay, again, take it in steps. I probably, I don't know, I would be careful trying to enter that whole thing in the calculator. What does this, so it's 1, obviously, but 1, and then what happens with all these, the 4, the 1, and the 3? What does that become? 12. Positive 12. So this whole thing becomes 13 inside of me. Over 2. Okay, how many answers does that represent? That represents two. What are they? Like written out? Negative one plus third and negative one. Good. And negative one minus third and thirteen. We need to that those are we're done solving, but now what do we need to do? We have to go check if those are correct. Okay? Like if they are extraneous or not. How are you gonna do that? Yeah, I would just go get a decimal for both and then go plug them back in. So negative 1 plus square root of 13. And then oh, you need parentheses around that. Don't forget to put parentheses around your whole numerator. Divided by 2. And then negative 1 minus square root of 13 divided by 2. Okay, so our two answers are 1.3 and negative 2.3. Let's go see if those work. So again, we go plug them back in the original. You don't have to like plug them in the whole thing. What are we looking for again? Once we take our answers back to the original, what do we look for? Logging a negative or a zero. Okay? That's all you have to check. I don't want to have to rewrite that whole thing, so I'm just going to bring it down, since I can't see it, it's kind of a pain. Okay. So here's how I want you to do the check step. Do it, I said I don't need to plug it in the whole thing. Which one of those two answers is probably more concerning in the first place? Let's check the negative first. Maybe it's fine, maybe it's not, but I would start there. Well, go to the one that you think would be negative. Negative 2.3 plus 1. Does that work? No. Okay, so log base 6 of negative 2.3 plus 1 is negative. Okay, so this is extraneous. Do you see how we didn't plug it in for all the x's and go check everything? Just be, like, be um, strategic about where you stick that x. Because I know this one's going to be negative if I plug in a negative 2.2. And so I've already kicked it out. It doesn't work in there, so it doesn't work at all. How about the 1.3? Can we assume it works? Well, does it work here? Yeah, 1.3 plus 1. No worries. How about here? What's 2 times 1.3? 2.6 minus 3. Is that okay? Nope. What do we say when, we, when neither one of them work? Yeah. 
So here's what I'm going to warn you. Don't just solve and be like, oh, well, one of them didn't work, so that means the other one does. Because maybe it doesn't. Maybe they both do. Maybe just one doesn't. So you need to check both. All right, let's go write some steps, and then we're done. Last note of this chapter. I don't know. It depends how big you write. It depends how big you write. She's going to bring you one. Yeah, you guys, I have extra sheets if you need, so you can tear off and share. Yeah, just grab some. Do you need some more? Yeah, I don't know. For me, it's probably going to be like two and a half boxes. Yeah, to put your glasses on. Yes. Minus ten. Sure, Especially about I actually eat some Do you not normally eat? A lot of things. You know what? 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 You I've never heard that before. Yeah, let's get this and then I'll try. Alright. Guys, I want you to look back at your notes just briefly at the at the subtitles for the last actually the titles for the last three sections. They said exponential, exponential, exponential. Now we've switched over to logarithmic solving. Okay? Make sure that you know which section of your notes to follow when you're doing one of these. And that will help a lot. Just you just use our whole card. No, no card. Just a note card. All right, step one. Yeah, you should do it with some big thing. Yeah. Because this is too many notes. Uh-huh. And we're going to have to, like, rewrite it all anyways. I <laughs> can't. So... Well, it's because we have this to do. We are doing. You can't talk and write at the same time. Yeah, I can. I do it every day. Same. So, can we? But I don't need to have this anyway. Never mind. Condense. So get to one log on both sides. I was going to say, I don't need to like, get this in here. It's already there. Huh? I'm stressed. Good luck in your game. Thank you. No bats and shoes today? <laughs> Alright. Get to one log on both sides. If necessary. Meaning, if you only have one log on one side, or one number somewhere mixed in there, then... Um, let me just add that to the note. So, if you have a loose number just floating around, like log of, or just 10, it's mixed in your log equations and it's a 10, then you want to get just one log overall, okay? Otherwise, if you have multiple logs without any, like the one we just did, where you don't have a loose number, then get one log on each side, 
Okay, you'll see what I mean. I'll actually, let's just write an example. Okay, not a whole problem worked out, but I think what we'll do is just write some little um, illustrations of what each note means. So like this one, would, I'm just making up something. Okay, if you have something like this, you want to get those logs together on one side and leave the five on the other. Okay, over here, if all you have is logs, let's make up something completely different so you don't confuse it for another, for a continuation of that one. Hmm? Why are you giving me that? Is that log subbase 6? Yes. Make up your own. It doesn't matter really what you put there. No, I'm not talking about the numbers. I'm talking about like the placement of it. Like I couldn't tell if like, the x plus 1 was an x one or not. Because I don't recommend talking while you write notes. When you're not processing what you're writing. Okay. So if you have it where it's all logs, or all, uh, oh my gosh, I feel like, huh? Mm. Here's the thing, guys. Like, I, I'm trying to help you avoid pitfalls, but... I need you to apply some critical thinking when you do this, too, okay? If you have all logs, get it to one log on each side. If you have just a number floating around, get it to one log on one side. Well, write it bigger on yours. Write it bigger on yours. What? Nothing. That's alright. <laughs> we'll make it. Wait, for the schedule tomorrow? Like, do we have all of our classes? It's a Monday schedule. Alright, number two. Once you have those logs down to one log, you need to maybe clean up in there. <laughs> So we're going to say as needed because you may not need to do that. So in the example we just did, we had to there we go. We had to distribute, or maybe you have to simplify if it happens to be like the quotient property. Maybe you have to simplify something. So clean up. Would you like examples of that? Like a little okay. If you had, maybe we're working on one of these, so log base 4 of x plus 1 times x, then you would have to distribute, okay? Or, what if you ended up using the quotient rule instead, quotient property? So that's simplify, right? I'm just giving you ideas of what you might have to simplify. So clean up, simplify that stuff. two examples we cleaned up we have a log either in one spot or on both sides how do we 
proceed. Yeah, good job. We have to undo the log. Or both, in that case, if it's on both sides. So we have already written this, but it's a good reminder. Trying to write. So take the base of the log to the log power. Do we need an illustration for that? Perfect. Good. Next. Solve the remaining non-log equation. We've seen two now that have been quadratic. Doesn't mean they all will be, but it might be. If it was me and I don't know the quadratic formula, I would put it right there. I am not going to do that, but you can. Last step. Check for extraneous solutions. So plug answers back into the most logical original log. And what are you looking for? And uh, let's not say it that way. What are we looking for? What can't we do? Okay, good enough. 